My name is Felix Rogotsky, and we are going to discuss a new type of computing, which is currently in the experimental phase. And after this presentation, you will be able to describe what this new field of computing is all about and what to expect from it in the future. So what is quantum computing? So the type of computing I'm going to be talking about here is quantum computing. The early versions of quantum computers exist right now, and they are on the verge of being a big part of our daily lives. You don't need to be a physicist to understand the role that these quantum computers could play in changing the world. On small, on small scales, physical matter exhibits properties of both particles and waves, and quantum computing leverages this behavior using specialized hardware. However, the current state of this technology is largely experimental and not practical yet, so we can't use it for applications yet. So on this slide, you could see that modern computers are defined by bits and bytes, which are the smallest piece of data that computers can process and store. This is based on binary states where the states that are in the binary state can either be a 1 or a 0, but can also be represented by an, off or, an on or off switch, as long as each bit is holding one of two potential values. This binary computing is based on classic physics principles. And a quantum computer uses its own unit of, da of data measurement, which is called the qubit, and it, rep it also represents 1s and zeros, but it can, but it can also represent one and zero at the same time as a third state. So one, zero, and then a combination of one and zero. You've probably heard about the idea of Schrodinger's cat where a cat is placed in a box and essentially what happens is the food is poisoned and when you open the box, in theory, the cat should be dead, but before you open the box, the cat is in both states at the same time. And this shows the existence of two states at the same time until it is measured into one position, which is the binary position. This quantum phenomena is called superposition. These quantum physics characteristics of two states in this, at the same time gives qubits the potential to hold vastly more information than classical bits. On this slide, you can see that the physical representation of the traditional bit is called a transistor, which can either be on or off. The more transistors slash chips we have, the more binary information we can process. Because of mass production, transistors and chips became smaller and smaller as the technology developed. For example, an iPhone chip can have a, an iPhone chip like an iPhone transistor can have a size of three nanometers. To compare, a human DNA has a size of 2.5 nanometers. The physical representation of the qubit is achieved by manipulating the spin state of subatomic particles, either protons or electrons, which causes them to spin up, down, left, or right, creating two distinct states, which is one and zero, except quantum mechanics allows these subatomic particles to exist in multiple states simultaneously as a third distinct state from one and zero. So here are the steps that we took to quantum computing and quantum in general. So multiple qubits working together can potentially have huge processing power. Quantum computers require revolutionary types of hardware which play a major role in the future of quantum computing as an impactful industry. And this week, actually, one of the things reported was that Chinese scientists successfully managed to teleport a state over a photonics network. Quantum computing infrastructure. Let's talk about the types of experimental hardware for quantum computing. So the top languages for quantum computing are CERC, Kiskit and Twist, which are all based on Python. And not only that, but these 
companies right here are all part of the ongoing quantum revolution, which developed one of these three systems. So, as you can see here, you have Python, you have Qiskit, you have Q Sharp, which I actually forgot to mention, you have Circ, and you have Twist. And quantum programming is the process of designing quantum circuits using gates, switches, and operators to manipulate a quantum system for a desired outcome or results of a given experiment. All right, potential quantum computing applications. Quantum computing applications are everywhere. And scientists say that the key importance of quantum computing is that applied quantum technology may change the course of human history in the ways we can only dream about now. Despite the availability of modern computers, humanity is failing to make meaningful breakthroughs in medical science, like to beat cancer or cure other terminal diseases. Probably one of the biggest problems here is that nature operates deeper on a quantum level that we cannot grasp now, just like the qubits until the recent past. That means viruses and disease agents may have their own superpositions where subatomic particles also exist in multiple states simultaneously. In other words, we have to research nature on its own level, which goes all the way down to the foundation of the atoms that make up the universe that nature is operating at, and that is where we need to go in order to finally understand it. Now, quantum computing threat. Despite the high positive impact that quantum computing may have on our day-to-day -day lives, quantum computer may threaten other parts of our life. So we can see here that the RSA resistant, so that the RSA, which is the um, encryption algorithm used for traditional encryption, takes 1 million years to crack on a normal CPU. However, using a quantum computer with enough qubits running Shor's algorithm, that can be turned into 10 hours. This is a problem for, for all of our current encryption because it could be cracked really easily. So you see here, computer hack, user login, all of that can be decrypted and stolen when quantum computers become widespread. But scientists are also working on a, a to working to fix that. Quantum cryptography and post-quantum cryptography are both methods for securing data, but they use different approaches. For example, quantum key distribution is a quantum computing paradigm which uses quantum infra and communication, while something like Kyber or Dilithium are post-quantum cryptography schemes that can be implemented with the current infrastructure, but are still secure from quantum adversaries. Both quantum cryptography and post-quantum cryptography may have a role in future secure communication. However, there are some risks associated with post-quantum cryptography, such as the need to replace existing algorithms with new ones that have longer key shares and, sig and signature lengths. In August 2024, the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology finalized the following three post-quantum cryptography standards to strengthen modern public key cryptography infrastructure for the quantum era. So the first one we have right here is MLChem, which is derived from Crystal's Kyber, which is a key encapsulation mechanism selected for general encryption, such as for accessing secure websites. MLDSA is a lattice-based algorithm chosen for general purpose digital signature protocols, and SLHDSA, which is a stateless hash-based digital signature scheme. And Next steps to all-around PQC implementation. To formalize a bridge between underlying mathematical foundations of the qubit spin model into the open source computer language frameworks. To develop proofs in quantum cryptography and machine learning that quantum mechanics features applicable and generate a plausible result. And to update all security infrastructure frameworks with incorporation of the new post-quantum cryptography algorithms and patches. Here you have the block sphere, which shows the uh, spin of the qubit. Currently, I am working on a project which will translate some of these mathematical algorithms, which we can use to represent qubits over here and manipulate them into open source Python libraries 
to allow them to be used by anyone. Any questions? So if you have questions, you could go ahead and send them to me at my email on the STEM Web's website. And today, we walked through quantum computing in simple terms today, which is a major difference between traditional computers. And I've touched on various hardware and programming languages which are currently utilized. At this time, quantum, computer, well, quantum computing is still mostly on the experimental level, but more practical updates are coming and I am happy to entertain any questions.